Hey guys, um, took a trip to a new comic shop, well a new one for me, one that I've never been to this, this past weekend. It's called Captain's Comics and it's in Charleston, South Carolina. I remember making a visit to this place back, uh, oh good grief, it's been probably 40 years ago when it was called Galaxy Bookstore. Um, picked up a few things then, but uh, it's changed owners a couple times since the last time. But finally made it back down that way and uh, picked up a few things in the dollar boxes. And I'll kind of give a overview of the store as we go. Picked up Great Fables Crossover Part 9 of 6. This is The Literals Number 1. They also had the literals, number two. And the last one, the literals, number three. Um, this store is located on 1209 Sam Rittenberg Boulevard in Charleston. Uh, they've got a good many dollar boxes, but their dollar boxes are on the floor. Well, for younger people, that wouldn't matter, but an old fart like me, I was crawling around on the floor like a drunk man going through their dollar boxes. Good boxes, don't get me wrong. Lots of newer stuff. Um, there were a few older comics in there, meaning 80s, 70s, but for the most part, it was from 2000 up is what they had in their dollar boxes. Anyway, got Fables, number 83, mainly because it was part of this crossover. I was trying to get as many parts of it as I could. Fables, number 85. And I picked this one up. This is Fables, number 92. I did not have a list of the issues of Fables that I don't have. Most of the ones that I have are in the trade paperbacks where they collect story arcs. So I wasn't exactly sure which ones I had and which ones I didn't. They had a long box full of just fables, fairest, and fables related stuff in their dollar section. I hate I didn't have the list because I probably could have gotten 90% of the ones that I don't have. Uh, also picked up Fables 152 and 153. I was happy to get these. I wish they'd have had some uh, later issues of Fables after 153, but they, they did. So, anyway, I also picked up Ferris number two. Number four, number five, number seven. Don't know what this story is, but looking forward to reading this one. Number nine, number ten. Number 11, number 12, number 13, number 14. Let me go ahead and get these out of the way because it's infringing on the light. Um, a lot of these fairest I've a actually had in a couple of trade paperbacks, but Anyway, good to have the floppies. Got number 15, 16, 17, 18, like that cover, 19, 20, 
21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 32. Um, my son went with me to uh, Captain's Comics, and he was mainly looking for anime, manga, that kind of stuff. And he found some stuff that was 25% off, some stuff that was actually out of print, some stuff that's hard to find. Um, he said their selection was okay. Um, he's <laughs> he's kind of hard to please because he's been to several of the larger uh, manga shops here in the U.S., so... When comparing it to some of those, yeah, they well, they didn't have very much. But he, like I said, he did find some stuff that was out of print, some stuff that was hard to find, some rare stuff that he got at a really good price. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, you might want to go by and check them out. Hold oh, on, got a technical difficulty here. Trying to keep the books from falling. Well, they might just have to fall. All right, got Batman and Robin, annual number two. And there the books went. Got Final Night, number one. I've just always liked this cover. Don't know how the story's going to be, but, you know, had, had cool covers. Got number two. Number three. And number four. Not sure if that's all of them or not. I think it is. But anyway, it's just pretty cool to pick all those up on the cheap. Got this Green Lantern number 12, the deceased variant cover. Just thought that was a pretty cool cover, so picked it up. I've been piecemealing this series, at least the first few issues together over over the last couple years. This is Autumn Lands, Tooth and Claw, number four. Number five. I'll be knocking everything into the trash and on the floor. Number eight. See, there's another one on there. Yep. And number 10. For those of you who aren't familiar with this um, storyline, this was actually a commandy story that Kurt Busiek wanted to do at DC. And for some reason, they wouldn't let him do it. It was anyway. Don't know um, why, but anyway. So what he did was he took it to Image and he kind of scrambled some things up a little bit, changed some things around and did the story at Image. But when you read it, you can tell it's Commandy. In particular, if you remember the original Commandy series, there was a doctor who was a dog who looked exactly like this dog. Now, in this series, he's this character's kind of a not the smartest, not the smartest uh, guy in the class. But anyway, there's a lot of characters in these stories that. If you pay attention and you've read the original Commandy, you'll you'll pick up on it. Got uh, Titans Legion Universal Blaze number three of four. I think I picked an issue of this. I think I got actually got number four uh, about a month or so ago from uh, some place. Anyway, just thought it looked pretty cool, so picked it up. Pick this one up, total cover by, not going to lie. 
plus the fact that it's written, if you see, by Glenn Danzig and it's Frank Frazetta. It's called Death Dealer. Um, not exactly sure what issue this is. It might be a one-shot. Well, it says Death Dealer number two on the inside. Anyway, just thought it was a really cool cover and, you know, Glenn Danzig, Frank Frazetta. Thought I'd pick it up. All right. Picked up Superman Secret Identity number four of four. Uh, I have heard about this story. I've heard people say that it's, you know, really good read. So for a buck, thought I'd pick it up. Been piecing this one together for a long, for here, for a while too. David Latham's Stray Bullets. This is number nine. Um, I just like this story. It's kind of a grim and gritty, grim and gritty story. And each one kind of feeds into the next one. Most of them are usually about organized crime or people who are just, whose morals aren't exactly uh, on the up and up, but good reads, good reads. Got Battle for the Cal Arkham Asylum one shot. Don't think I've got this one. I've got a lot of the Battle for the Cal stuff. And anyway, I don't remember this cover, but if I do have it, eh, spend a buck for it. No big deal. Got Batman Eternal number 45, 46, 47, and 49. I'm not sure if I've got all of this series or not. I think I do. But anyway, it wasn't on my checklist, but for a dollar piece, I figured why not? If I've got them, I can put them in my trade-in box for my local comic shop, and they'll at least give me a little bit back on what I paid for them. Yeah, this New 52 Phantom Stranger number zero. I've always been a Phantom Stranger fan. Just, uh, you know, a weird character, strange character whose origins are... Never really explained. Just thought this looked pretty cool, so for a buck, I picked it up. Got this Green Lantern number 17. I, uh, this might recount Green Lantern's origin, maybe. Don't know. Um, like the art on the cover. Thought it looked pretty cool, so picked it up. This one, well, don't know. Batman Sins of the Fathers, number one. This is based on the Telltale series Batman game, video game. This is the variant cover. I, I'm very dubious about comics that are based on video games because they usually end up not being very good. And that's just my opinion, but anyway, but... Thought I'd give it a try because it had a pretty cool cover. Picked up this Jack of Fables number 20. When I saw on the top, we'll mail you a stinky dead gopher if you don't buy this issue. Plus the context of the cover, I said, yeah, I got to pick that up for a dollar. Why not? Got Captain America Annual number one. When I saw old school Bucky and... Captain America on the cover, I'm assuming this is a World War II time period story. Had to pick it up. Plus, I like Chris Sprouse's artwork, so. Yeah, Infinite Crisis number seven. I've got, I think I've got all of these, and this might be a second set that I'm working on. But anyway, I'm not doing it consciously. It's just when I see Infinite Crisis books, I pick them up. Got this, The Torch, number six of eight. I've got a couple of issues of this. Um, don't know if they did variant covers on it or not, but regardless, this is a Nazi cover, and I could not pass that up. Kind of surprised to see this one in the dollar bin. This is Marvel's Book Zero. Picked it up because of the cover. I mean, you've got 
an Alex Ross drone. I'm assuming it's Alex Ross. It looks like Alex Ross. Alex Ross drone cover of the Green Goblin fighting Spider-Man. Hey, I mean, what are you going to do? You got to get that. Got Marvel Tales number 62. This is a reprint title. Uh, reprinted some earlier Spider-Man issues. Just thought I'd pick it up. Why not? I mean, it should be a pretty good, pretty good read. This one's in really rough shape, but it's also, these are kind of hard to come by. This is Reggie and Me, number 20. And why this, these are hard to come by is because Archie has always tried to be Archie. Except during the superhero craze in the mid-60s, where they introduced... Uh, Comic, you know, superhero characters to the the Archie universe. Uh, Reggie, of course, was Evil Heart. Uh, Archie was like Pure Heart or something like that. Anyway, to find these on the to find a superhero theme cover on an Archie comic is fairly rare. So for a buck, thought I'd pick it up. This one's a, this is a very beat up, eat up, and I do mean eat up, copy of Wonder Woman number 189. Just thought I'd pick it up. It's an older Wonder Woman, and I like reading these stories, and I mean, I paid a buck for it, so. Got Marvel's Greatest Comics number 40. I uh, like the cover, but I also like it, it includes a bonus, the awesome origin of the Black Panther. So, picked it up for that. And lastly, I got Marvel 2 in 1, number 24. Kind of stained up, beat up, but I've been trying to pick up some of these Marvel 2 in 1 and Marvel Team Up books over the last uh, several months. Picking them up here and there as I see them. Just cool mid mid late seventies comics. You know, you get a thing team up with uh, a different superhero every issue, and the uh, Marvel team up. You get Spider Man teamed up with somebody, so pretty cool. Anyway, final assessment on Captain's comics. Cool shop. They've got a lot of wall books that are seem to be pretty fairly priced, the ones that I saw. Some they still had uh, pandemic prices on, if you know what I mean. But for the most part, if you hunt around, you can find some uh, find some stuff that's a little better stuff than what I picked up, and you can get it on the cheap. Um, so I would recommend, you know, if you're down that way and you just want to check out, check out a comic shop in the Charleston, South Carolina area, go buy, go buy Captain's Comics, 1209 Sam Rittenberg Boulevard. Anyway, that's my haul. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and we will see y'all next time.